Hey there guys, guess what I made? I made a bunch of custom nodes for Lightgraph. If you've been following the channel recently, then you might be wondering how the heck we got there from our current project, which is a keypad, macro pad. And the answer to that is Creative ADD. I've had this one project marinating in the back of my head for a while now, so I decided to go ahead and get some preliminary work done on it because it kept on popping up and distracting me from other things I was working on. And I figured once I had the preliminary work done, then I'd settle back down and get other stuff done. And one thing led to another. I was going to do my own custom interface, but I ended up over at Lightgraph. I recognized Lightgraph from Comfy UI, which is a stable diffusion fork. Well, not a fork, but it uses stable diffusion. Has a node-based GUI editor like you would see in, for example, Blender. And I figured that was a good fit for what I wanted to do. So I started reading over the Lightgraph stuff and I tried to make some things work, just what they had out of the box, but decided that I really just need to make some my own nodes since what I was doing was data processing that required sampling large amounts of data. And that's how we got here. Now, first thing off before I start talking about the nodes I made, I want to mention that while there is some good documentation for Lightgraph, the fact of the matter is, is that in between this one wiki page and the one guide that's included in the repository, there's really not enough. So as I'm going over my nodes, I'm going to just point out a couple minor things that will need clarification because again, they're not really documented every, anywhere. So let's hop into it. So here we are in a default light graph scene. And this is just a canvas HTML canvas with light graph enabled and attached to it. And this is a server running locally for my project. So starting right here under add node basic, we can see we have a few things for working with arrays. I played around a little bit with trying to make a for loop to iterate over the array and modify stuff. And I decided it was a little too cumbersome. So that's what prompted this whole entire thing. Aside from const array right here, which will allow us to create a new array, I implemented a few new nodes here underneath array. And first one we have is array create. Now we'll talk about the map function in just a second. We'll ignore that input for a moment. We'll come here and we'll just look at what we have coming out of array create. So as you can see with length one, you might intuit that that creates a, an array of length one. And that's exactly what we got here. The next thing that I have to mention, because you're going to see this happen a lot and it may confuse you if you start following along at home is as I drag out here, you'll notice this search box pop up. You have to enable that. That is not something that pops up as default. And I think it's a little bit silly. And furthermore, figuring out how exactly to do this is not trivial. So I originally figured this out by going through the demo site that's available off of the GitHub page and looking through their source code. But here inside of the actual repository under source and light graph, you'll see most of these options listed out right here. I think the demo page was a little easier to read through, but one of those things I'm not expecting that to be updated all the time. So if you just come to the light graph object in the source code, you can read about all these extra options that you have, and these will allow you to implement different features. The feature specifically for the pop-up menu when you drag out of an input or an output is this one right here, release link on empty shows menu. So when you take a link from an input or an output and release that link on an empty, as in on nothing, it will show menu. And then holding down alt when you do that will bring up the search bar. So that's how that works. Again, I feel like this one should be on by default. It should be true by default, but that's just my opinion. So back to our array nodes. Uh, most of the nodes that I added will accept some kind of function. And in order to create one of those, we have this array function. So that is going to pop up this box. And first thing, very first thing, I wanna make sure that I say this before anything else, this should not be run on the cloud, you should not be running this on a public server because this takes the function that you write here and just executes it. It uses the function constructor to construct a new function and that is inherently unsafe. Now that being said, what you should also know is down here underneath math, it is the formula. This does the same thing. So consider that if you're going to allow math formula, array function on a public interface, 
that does allow a user to insert any amount of code and have that code run. That is inherently not safe and therefore you should probably remove them. I have instructions on the GitHub readme on how to remove array function if that's the case. However, for the most part, I feel like most people run these locally so to work on their own data and whatnot. So that should be perfectly safe for you to run it yourself because you are in charge of what code is getting run. Now, first off, let me go ahead and link these and you can see nothing changed. And that's because right now the callback is return null, which means that for each item of this array, we're using array.map. That's why it says map array. And this is the callback for that function, which means that on each item within the array that we created, that will be replaced with null. So if I hop in here and change this to one, you can see that our array got in updated to one. Furthermore, you'll notice that if we change length here, it will change the length of the array as expected. So, and the function will automatically reevaluate each time that happens. One other thing to note just very quickly is that most of the arrays have this length property. That is just a useful property to have around, and that's just the length of the array. All right, next up here in the array function, we have arguments as one of our properties that can be set on this block, on this node. And that is just a number. It goes up and down. And basically what happens is when it constructs this function, again, using the function constructor, it's going to declare as arguments to the new function uh, arguments with the form arg i. So for example, right now that is not going to work because we have zero arguments. As you can see, that is an error. But if I increase this by one, we now have one argument starting at arg zero. If I go to two, then I can go arg plus one. So we have two arguments, arg zero and arg one. And those are going to conform to whatever the function is passing in. Again, this is a map function, array map function. And that means that you're going to get the element as the first argument, the index as the second argument, and the array itself as the third argument if you want them. Obviously, I had this as 0, 1, and 2. And because this is JavaScript, they can just randomly discard the other arguments. That's technically not correct, but we're not going to get into the specifics. However, anyway, the point being that uh, you're only going to, in this example with the map function, have at max three arguments. The rest of the arguments, if I go up here to argument uh, four, or actually it's argument three, right? Let's just go ahead and print that out you can see that we get nulls again. And that's because the third argument is not passed in by map, or I should say the fourth argument is not passed in by map. That is arg three, because again, zero, one, two, three, and therefore it is null. So that is basically how that is going to work. Again, function can do anything you want, technically speaking. As you can also see, you've got this little tiny text box. So you should keep it short and simple. And fact, the matter is, is that this is not intended to be a super complicated thing. This really is only intended to be a Lambda. Uh, final note on array function is that you do need the return. The That is different from the math formula node. The math formula node prepends return to whatever you have here. So being as that is different, uh, you need to keep that in mind if you're used to using math formula. All right, and next up we have array from variable so this is going to look in the global scope for a variable and then use array dot from from it and there we go so i've just loaded up an array that is in on the page defined on the page and if i go ahead and screw up the variable name you'll see that it changes to null because it can't find the variable so that is how that works the map function just to go over again Change that to arg1, and we'll just add one, as you can see. Works exactly the same way where it initializes the variable and then maps over the variable. Uh, next up, may as well do map, because we've already done that three times. So, watch. As you can see, null, because map requires a function. It does not work without a function, so let's add one. 
And I'll just go ahead and do something real simple here because we've already looked at this enough. We'll just do arg1 plus one rather, arg0 plus one. And there we go. We've added one to each of the values in the array. And next up, let us go ahead and let's sort. So you may notice that things are going to go very sideways here and you may not understand why. And the answer is JavaScript. <laughs> so this looks all right right now, but let's say that I change this to something. I'm just going to change it to times three. You notice how that says 12, 18, six and nine. And that is because JavaScript by default sorts arrays of numbers as strings. So therefore this is string one, two comes before one, eight, which comes before six because that's how you sort strings. So we're going to go ahead and add a function in here to get this working correctly. And just for the heck of it, let's go ahead and do the opposite. Let's sort descending. Uh, the array function here is going to have to be based on the sort callback. The sort callback has two arguments. Arguments zero and one are going to be the first and second element to compare. So we can go ahead and say arg zero less than one. And again, we're going to sort in descending order. So I'm going to do plus one and minus one as the alternative. And there we go. Now we actually have it in descending order. It is sorting them correctly. And we can move on to the next block, the next node. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's go ahead and do slice. So slice does not actually take any functions. Instead, it's going to take a start and an end number, except if we come into here to watch, you'll notice that it also accepts no values. And that just basically copies the array. So without values, we get the same exact array back with values. Let's go ahead to const and you can see this defaults to one. And that means that we go from index one to the end because there is no end value. Let's go ahead and bring this down here and let's get a math operation here. Uh, this is one of those warnings about light graph. For some reason, you have to right click and go into the properties to change the operation. This is compared to also in the math and it's one of those things that's funny because it is in the math thing and I believe it is not compare. Let's double check this. Is it branch condition condition? So as you can see with the condition, it starts out at a greater than B, but you have this little uh, slider down here to change what the condition is. For some reason, the operation is not set up like that for this node. Hopefully that changes in the future. But I'm going to go ahead and drag. Actually, you know what? Let's create a new node const for the sake of arguments. There we go. So we start out with the length of our array. We're mining it by one. And that leaves us with two values right here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and because I want some more values, I'm going to reduce this. The const number steps by fractions of a number. So I'm going to have to set that manually to zero and let us go ahead on and move on to the next node. So I think a filter should probably be next. Yeah, we're going to do filter and then we'll do reduce after that. That makes sense. So we come in here. We can see that we get null because filter requires a function. Come down to function, create our function. We're just going to go off the first argument, which is uh, going to be the element. So arg zero, and let's just filter out the odd numbers. So arg zero modular two equals zero. And there you can see that nine is odd. Therefore it gets filtered out by this equation and we end up with just 18 and 12. And finally, that brings us to our last node, which is reduce. And watch as you can see nothing happens we actually need the function value here the initial value is optional this again just like all these other nodes right here are is based on array dot reduce so we come in here to the function the array reduce has two values and we do need both of these values for reduce and that would be the accumulator and the current element so very simple i'm just going to do arg zero plus arg one 
and this will create a sum. So this will sum the entire array because it's taking the accumulator, which is all the previous values from reduce and adding the next value to it. And if we supply a, an initial value, just leave that at one for the heck of it. We can see that we start out at one in this case. So the accumulator starts out at one instead of zero. And then we add 18 and then we add 12, getting us to 31. So that is a rundown on all the nodes that I've added to light graph or I've provided that you can add to light graph custom nodes for working with arrays. In terms of other possible nodes that I'm considering, I don't know that it's necessary to have an iterator. I tried making an, iter an iterator out of primitives inside of this yeah, uh, primitive nodes here and it was complicated. So if that did become necessary, if I did need an iterator, then that would make sense. Uh, that is the only other node that I'm considering adding at the moment. But if you have other nodes that you think are useful, you can definitely add those. Also, feel free to look at the source code. It's up on GitHub. It is extremely straightforward. Uh, this is actually, I will say, another thing about documentation. You can, in fact, use the class syntax for nodes. The one little hiccup you got to overcome is just using static title to put the title in. You can't actually put the title in. Well, you can. You technically can. It does, however, cause uh, visual differences if you put the title inside the constructor. Doing it this way seems to fix all those problems. But otherwise, you can set it up in this manner with an actual class instead of using functions and converting functions to prototypes. Or, I mean, technically speaking, a function is a prototype. Point being is that instead of doing it that way, this way, in my opinion, is a little bit cleaner. Also, one other thing to note is back to documentation. In previous, in all the documentation that's available, all right, they say uh, to add a property in a different method. And then when you look at the actual source code, the actual source code uses this add property, which makes sense because it goes with this dot add input and this that add output and widget. So for some reason, all the documentation and guides for light graph don't tell you to use the add property. That seems silly to me. Just use add property. And furthermore, and I mentioned this on the GitHub readme, but we do have a base class for array functions right here. You can go ahead and copy this out. And basically all you need to do to create your own function, uh, your own secure function, I should say. Yeah, the code is readme, so I can't actually put an enter in here, but assign to this dot underscore func the function you want. That's the only thing you need to do. Obviously, this is going to be a little bit more complicated because we're accepting it from the user. But if I had my own custom function right here, which was an array function, the only thing in there would be static title, changing the title of it and changing this dot func to something else. So we call super that will set this dot func to null. And then right underneath super, you say this dot underscore func equals my function. And that's the only thing you need to do to create custom array functions. Anyway, yep, that is the project that I worked on all of yesterday. It's one of these funny things where I had it like 90% done for what I needed it for after like just two hours, right? Maybe three hours, maybe three hours, including the fact that I had to dig through all the uh, source code on Lightgraph's main page, right? Because I had to dig through all that, maybe it got me up to three hours, but then I spent like another three hours after that, just polishing it and working out a whole bunch of kinks and getting things looking nice. But like I said, all the documentation for the nodes are right here. Well, not all the documentation you might want, but all the documentation that you practically need. And if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out and ask. Also, obviously, issues up here in case you run into any issues. The code is straightforward enough that I don't think you will, but in case it does, because I'm only human, may very well happen. Feel free to leave an issue. And yep, that's it from me. So hop over to GitHub, go ahead and download the light graph array nodes, toss it into your HTML page and have fun. And as always, have a great and wonderful day, afternoon or evening, wherever you are in the world. And I will catch you next time.